salutations and good morrow everyone and welcome back to another grounded update video where today we're going to be going in and telling you guys five things that i believe all of you should do before you beat the game of grounded and no i'm not talking go and grab every single milk molar in the backyard or go and get every single scabby you can do it or go through and get the secret end game boss so you can get the super special ending no, it's not any of that. This is actually practical stuff for you guys to get the entire gameplay of Grounded, the entire feel of the game, the whole story, and all of that. Now, the first thing is going to be a little bit grindy for all of you guys, but I believe absolutely that you guys can do it, and that is getting your armor up to tier 9. And while you're at it, you might as well throw an ar a weapon getting it up to tier 9 as well. If you could go through and get a level 9 set of armor, it really makes the game that much more doable, especially if it can be a tier 2 or tier 3 armor set, like the Ladybug armor, the Widow armor, the the, the roly-poly armor, the moth armor, any of those in there will make it so you're having a fantastic time in the backyard. It makes it so much easier for you to go and fight things. For instance, this black ox beetle right here. This is actually a pretty good point leading us to our second one. But this black ox beetle right here, he hit me pretty hard. But I'm still able to uh, wipe him out because of my upgraded gear that I have. Couple healing items is what I'm going to need in order so I don't die. But all in all, he's actually not that hard anymore because of the gear set that I have. All of this is due to my level 9 gear and my level 9 weapon. Now, this is a great point to talk about point number 2, and that is being able to get upgrades and stuff like that. Being able to get upgrades in this game is super important. For you guys to be able to get to that tier 9 gear, you know, you're going to need the, the shining plates or the sturdy plates. You're going to need all of the different plates and the jewels and in order to unlock those guys you need to head over to the base that's right back here in this back corner and grab the note that's in there and the burgle chip and bring it over to burgle because that is how you unlock jewels and that is how you guys unlock the supreme plates that are going to make it so you can get your armor to level nine have you even beaten grounded if your armor isn't level nine if you don't have at least one set that's made it to level nine come on guys it's an achievement out there go get geared up but nonetheless get out there Get over to that base and get that one. And while you're over there, you might as well explore over there and grab yourself a pinch whacker as well. Now, point number two, the second thing you guys should do before you go through and beat the game of Grounded is, I know it's going to sound crazy, guys. Here it comes. You guys are going to want to beat all of the mixers in the yard. And I don't mean just the regular mixers. I also mean the super mixers as well. The super mixers, even though they are insanely, insanely powerful and hard to do, there is a special weapon that you can get that i believe everybody should give a try and that is the the prod smacker the prod smacker is a powerful weapon here let's take a little bit of a peek all right so here is the prod smacker it is a two-handed weapon guys and it's actually pretty cool uh it is a giant weapon and it does swing fairly slow for a two-handed weapon but nonetheless it's very powerful now in order to unlock this one guys you are going to need to go and do all of the mixers in the backyard and they all are as follows you have one you have two you have three you have four you have five regular mixers then you have one two three super mixers if you could go and do all eight of those mixers you will be able to go to the under under the sandbox into the black ant kill lab over by where you fought the assistant manager, there is a locked door up there that you can't get in. If you could get through that door, you could unlock this weapon. Now, what does this weapon do and why is it so freaking special, Sim? Well, it is really special because at the end of the day, if you can charge up a full attack with it every time you charge an attack, you do an electric smash, which can do a massive amount of stun and this actually does really good damage as well. And all in all, guys, this is actually just super fun to do. And the mixers give you a ton of raw science, which is going to allow you to unlock more things in the science tree and is going to allow you guys to have an even better game of grounded. So we've covered upgrading armor. We've covered getting yourself this secret weapon by doing all of the mixers. They're around the yard anyway. You might as well do them. And base building is actually really fun. But no, base building is not 
one of the tips. All right, guys, so this next one is actually going to put you guys off a little bit because I'm going to tell you to do it because a lot of people don't really like doing it, but come on, guys. It's the way the game is supposed to be played, and that is get up there and turn off the haze. There's a couple different reasons why you guys should do this. One, it brings the backyard into the mode of what the backyard is supposed to be with the infected creatures in different areas. It brings the difficulty up. It allows you to be able to go through through and peep the last of the infected creatures that you need, which is the infected wolf spider. You're gonna need that one to complete out your collection. And have you even really survived in the backyard if you haven't gone through and been exploded by a wolf spider that can cause explosions? Have you even lived if you haven't had random mushroom spores killing you all the time? I mean, come on guys, this is the game of grounded we're talking about here. If you're not being decimated all the time, are you even playing? I'm just kidding, but nonetheless, it is a fun job to go through and actually fight wolf spiders. It's fun to fight the infected wolf spiders. It's fun to fight multiple things all at the same time, all just for the fun of the game of Grounded. So point number three is going to be going through and turning off the haze fighting infected wolf spiders and being able to peep all the creatures in the backyard for yourself. All right, guys, so point number four is a little bit of a collection, but I believe that it is important for you guys to do before you put down Grounded and you walk away from it. And that is, guys, I want you to go out and try to find all of the Wendell, Ominent, and Burgle logs. Why am I telling you guys to do this? If you're going to play the game of Grounded, I want you guys to have the full story, okay? The game of Grounded is so much fun and the story is amazing. For all of you who are playing right now, the story is so phenomenal. Obsidian is known for their storytelling, guys. Trust me, it is worth the time for you guys to go out and explore through the different labs and grab those chips. And to give you guys a little bit of a hint, there is one that is underneath the pond over that way that you need to go through the back area behind Burgle in the Oak Lab in order to drop down, swim a, through a whole bunch of dark tunnels to end up in an area where you can grab the Holodazzle Scabby and another note and another recording. But that is a tip for all of you guys to be able to go out and get all of those so you guys can actually truly experience the story of Grounded. I don't want you guys to turn away from the game without ever being able to experience the whole thing. The gameplay is wicked fun, but guys, don't forget the story. All right, guys, and this last one is probably the craziest one of all, but that is, guys, for you guys to go out and fight the last three bosses that are in the game. And no, I'm not talking the secret end one. I'm talking all the optional bosses that you guys can go out and fight. All the ones that are out there that have nothing to do with the story, but are still tons of fun to fight anyway. I'm talking the Broodmother that's over in the hedge that you're going to need a Broodmother BLT in order to fight. I'm talking the Termite King that's at the bottom of the Termite Hill, because when you go down there, you can grab the Burgle Chip that gives you the power to become a wizard. Who doesn't want to be a wizard? Come on, go and grab it. The stabs are really fun. And finally, Finally, I'm talking the Praying Mantis. The Praying Mantis is a crazy difficult boss, but is so much fun in its entire way of being able to fight it that I believe all of you guys will really enjoy being able to take this boss on and have a great time before you beat the game. Now, this is going to allow you to have quite the good level of when you actually beat the game to be able to beat the game with a decent percentage. It will not be 100% at this time because you will need all the Milk Molars. You will need all the Scabbies you will need all the skills you'll need to have made a bunch of armor you'll need to have done all sorts of things in order to get to 100 percent but i'm not telling you guys 100 percent the game before you beat it i'm telling you guys to go through and have a fantastic time to play grounded the way that you want to play it but also give you guys a couple little helpful tips on how you guys can go through and make sure you are enjoying grounded to its fullest potential. But thank you everybody so much for watching this one. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you guys hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.